So I recently built Frost V2, a beautiful custom water-cooled gaming PC. And if you guys somehow missed the time-lapse video, I'll drop a link below. But in the PC, I've done something a little different. I installed a monitor in the back. A lot of you guys thought that was cool and you wondered how I did it. So I thought, why not make a dedicated video and show you guys. The Corsair 7000 series cases are finally here. Everything you know and love from the 5000 series, but on steroids. A much larger 80 liter full tower ATX case for all sorts of activities. This means more fans, bigger radiators, and more storage. The 7000 series also comes with a full size Commander Pro in the back, along with a six port fan hub and you get to choose how you want to show off your graphics card, either horizontally or vertically. The 7000 series is the perfect case for enthusiasts wanting to build a water-cooled PC or high-end systems without any compromise. To learn more, click the link below. Adding a display in your PC allows you to do two things. One, you can use it just for aesthetics and show off a really cool animated wallpaper that fits your PC's theme. Or two, you can set up a sensor panel to display hardware information. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do both. But first, you have to buy the correct size display for your PC. There are many different sizes out there and it all comes down to your preference and what you can actually fit inside of your PC. The one I'm using in Frost V2 is a seven inch LCD display, but there are bigger and smaller ones out there like this five inch display, for example. Step two, you need to figure out where you wanna install the monitor inside your PC. Typically, you wanna place it in an open space where it's not only visible at a quick glance, but you're also able to easily hide the cables. It's all about cable management. The most popular locations for a sensor panel are right on the PSU shroud, given you have enough clearance with the side panel, of course. I've also seen a bunch of people put the panel against the motherboard tray, which looks really nice in some cases. And then finally, in the back where the rear exhaust fan would normally go. As you can see, this is where I installed my seven inch display. Just keep in mind that you are giving up an extra fan slot if you do go with this configuration. This is the most common location for the monitor because of how easy it is to install due to the cutouts in the back. The other two locations will require some modding to get it installed perfectly, unless you decide to just use double-sided 3M tape, which will also get the job done. Now to install the monitor, you will need four extended standoff screws that go into the threads behind the monitor. The length of these standoff screws depends on how much you want the monitor to extend out from the back of the case. In my experience, the normal size standoff screws that you normally get with the cases ended up being too short. Behind the monitor, you will see an HDMI port and a micro USB port that kind of sticks out. So you wanna make sure that there is plenty of space between the monitor and the case so that these ports don't come in contact with anything. Luckily, I did find a kit on Amazon that pretty much gave me everything I was looking for. This kit will have a variety of different size standoffs and it's compatible screw, which you will need to secure the monitor to your case. I'll drop a link to the kit below for anyone that's interested in picking it up. So basically, you'll just need to install four of the standoffs into four of the threads behind the monitor. But before we hook it up against the case, we do have to plug in the cables. There will be one HDMI cable to provide output from your graphics card and one micro USB cable, which delivers power to the monitor. Normally, these monitors would come with these short and bulky cables, which I didn't find too pleasing. So I ended up swapping them for thinner cables because it would not only look much cleaner, but the cable management would be a lot easier as well. But of course, this is optional. You guys can stick to the uh, default cables. The length also matters, you guys. You wanna make sure to have a long enough cable so that the HDMI can reach into the back of your graphics card while the USB cable plugs into any of the USB ports in the back of the motherboard. The way you wanna route the cables is all up to you. I've seen some people route the cables from the top and out the back, which I'm guessing they had to drill a hole for. Um, and then I've seen other people route it from the bottom, which in my opinion looks the cleanest since you can easily run both cables through one of the PCI brackets below especially if you're using a vertically mounted GPU. Then it won't be even visible from the front. You can also take it a step further and modify the monitor so it looks nicer in your PC. In my case, I just grabbed some white vinyl and I skinned all of the black bezels. So that way it just blends in with the color scheme a lot better, but obviously this is optional. Keep in mind that some monitors have a power switch in the back, which is turned off by default for some reason. So make sure the monitor is set to on before you install it in your case. So now that we have the cable situation figured out, it's time to install the monitor inside your case. Position the monitor so that the standoffs are visible through the cutouts from behind the 
case because you will need to secure each one of them using the provided screws. It is completely fine if you can't see all four of the standoffs from the back. This will mostly depend on what case you're going with and how the cutouts are designed. In my case, I was only able to secure three out of the four standoffs, but as long as you guys can do at least two of the four standoffs, then you will be fine. It doesn't take much to hold this in place because of how light and small it is. If you can only do two, then I recommend going with two that are diagonal from each other. All right, so now that we installed the monitor inside the case, it's time to move on to the next step, which is to customize it. All right, so we're gonna power on the PC, and once you're on the desktop, we are going to set up the monitor's orientation. Right click on the desktop and click on display settings. You should be able to see the extra display that we plugged in. If you don't see one on here, that means you did not plug in the cables correctly or you didn't switch the power on from the back. So make sure to go back and do that before moving forward. The first thing we're gonna do is make sure that all of our monitors are extended. So click on the drop down menu underneath the multiple displays and select the extend option. Next, we're going to scroll up again and click on the extra monitor just to make sure it's selected. And then we're gonna scroll down and set the display orientation to portrait flipped. As you can see, we now have the correct orientation of the monitor but yours will vary depending on how you installed your display. So let's say for example, it's in landscape, then obviously you guys would have to leave it on landscape. I don't like how the Windows taskbar is showing up on my monitor, so let's get rid of that too. Right click on the taskbar, go into settings, and make sure to check the option where it will automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. As you can see, the taskbar goes away and it just looks so much cleaner in my opinion. So now you can do whatever you want with the extra display. You can add a wallpaper or better yet, a video wallpaper. I like to constantly change it up from time to time and I just like how it adds a new element of customization to my PC. But let's say you guys don't wanna put a wallpaper on the monitor. You feel like it's a waste of space and you wanna add a bit of util utility. Utility? Utility? Utility. And you wanna add more utility to the PC. Well, you guys can actually add a sensor panel to display hardware information. So we're gonna be using IDA64, which is free software that lets you monitor your hardware and stress test your components. I'm sure you guys have heard of them before. Once you have the program installed, we're going to click on File, then Preferences, and click on the Show Sensor Panel, and then hit Apply. By default, you are greeted with this atrocious monstrosity of a default panel, which doesn't even belong in the trash bin, to be honest. Now here's where things get a little tricky. You can completely customize a panel yourself from scratch, which is a very tedious process and can take hours, if not days to complete, but you will end up with something unique that's yours. Or option number two, you can look up a pre-built sensor panel from IDA64 forums. There is a pretty large community of people that go on there and share their very own custom made sensor panels. I'm not gonna lie, there were a bunch of really boring ones on there, but I did find a handful of really cool ones and yes, I did go through all 132 pages just for this video. There's a pretty cool Star Wars themed one that I found, which I think will look really cool in a Star Wars themed PC or setup. Uh, there's a minimalistic white panel that I thought looks pretty sweet, but out of all the sensor panels in here, I have to say my two favorite ones were this retro synthwave theme, which unfortunately doesn't have the same resolution as my monitor, so I can't use it and then this Fantasy of Space Cyberpunk panel, which does match the theme of my PC a lot better. So if you find one that you like, all you have to do is download the file and import it in your sensor panel manager. To do this, all you have to do is right click on your sensor panel and click on the manager and then just hit the import button. Locate where you save the file and open it up. All of the settings will get transferred over to your sensor panel and now you have the exact same one. One thing to keep in mind is that the resolution of the sensor panel has to match the resolution of your monitor. If the resolutions don't match, then all the text and the images are gonna be all jacked up. Now let's say you picked one that you like, but you wanna modify it a little bit. Maybe you didn't like the font they used or some of the labels are incorrect. For example, on this pre-built sensor panel, the specs are incorrect. It is using a custom label for the person's PC. I don't have an iPhone or a GTX 1070, so I wanna change these up. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the sensor panel and go into the manager. Over here, you can see the full list of assets used to create this specific panel. This is where you can change anything you want. So let's start with something simple like the PC part labels. I'm gonna look for the label 9600K. So here it is up top and I'm gonna hit modify and look for the label. Here it is on the bottom. I have a Ryzen 7 5800X, so let's go ahead and put that in here. I'm gonna keep the color because I think it matches the sensor panel nicely, but I'm gonna change up the font. 
Then I'm gonna hit OK. And there you go, guys. It now has the correct specs, but also I think the font looks so much more cyberpunky in my opinion. I'm gonna take this time to do the same for the rest of the specs. Now I'm going to change the font of the usage percentage, but this is a label because it is displaying the CPU's utilization. So basically I have to look for a system type on their CPU. So here is a CPU label, which is basically this on the sensor panel. And then we got the CPU utilization. You can always tell the difference by looking at the type. This is the one I want to change. So I'm going to click on modify again, come down here and change the font once again. But you guys get the idea. When you break it down, it's really easy to do. It's just tedious, that's all. Now, if you wanna create your very own, just delete all the assets, which will wipe the slate clean, and you can add whatever you want one by one. And I'm gonna show you guys a few examples. All right, so let's say you guys wanna create your very own custom panel from scratch. I'm gonna show you guys just a quick demonstration on how you can add assets to a completely blank canvas. So what we're gonna do is select all of the assets over here and then pretty much delete them. And as you guys can see, we have a clean slate. So let's say we wanna add something. Let's start with something very simple. So we're gonna click new and then add a, uh, let's add a date on there, for example. We're gonna select our font. We'll label a date and then for the color, we'll just kind of stick to the same color scheme. So let's just pick blue or you know what, teal. Teal should be fine. Hit okay. And then text size, let's do 50. Then we're gonna hit okay. As you guys can see here, the date pops up on the top. You can right click it and click on move and this will allow you to position it anywhere you want on the sensor panel. So this is gonna be a very ugly panel, just letting you guys know, but I'm pretty much just showing you the basics of how to add assets to your panel. So let's go to click on new again and add something more useful. Let's say CPU utilization, for example. We'll pick a slightly different color. Let's go darker blue. And then a text size, let's do, I don't know, 25. Wow, that is ugly. That is actually pretty ugly. Um, we're actually gonna modify this. I don't need the label on here because obviously I'll know it's a CPU. We'll just put 5%. We'll just leave it as the uh, percentage. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my own label for this. So I'll do new. We're gonna go down here. You guys can also add your own custom label. So if you design your own label, all you gotta do is click on image and just upload it from your PC. A lot of people tend to do their own graphic work on there, which, which looks really cool at the end. But uh, for the sake of simplifying it, we're just gonna do a static label. So text size, I don't know, let's just do 30. And then we're obviously gonna label it CPU. So there you have it. CPU, obviously you'll, I'll just take some time to kind of align all these together. All right, let's say we wanna add a few temperature readings. So we're gonna go back here on new. We're gonna make sure simple sensor item is selected. And then we're gonna scroll down to the temperature section, which should be near the bottom here. So we have an option to go with either motherboard, CPU, GPU, and even our M.2 SSD shows up on here, which is pretty cool. So we'll just select CPU and stick with the same settings we've been going with, just for consistency, and then hit okay. So there it is. Our CPU temperatures. Oh, unfortunately, Bebus doesn't have um, the little circle thing on there. So I guess we'll have to change the font. So we got the CPU, let's just add a GPU on here. We can even search items on here for, um, so it's easy for you guys to, to look it up. So we're gonna go down here, where's temperatures? Here it is. We're doing a water cool build, so I don't think the GPU temperatures will show up. We need a hotspot. Okay, that is atrocious. What the hell? Hotspot, I don't need that on there. Fairly cool temps. But yeah guys, that's pretty much the gist of it. You would just have to go in here and essentially add anything you want displayed. All the custom stuff, graphic work will be under here on image. Um, you can even add gauges actually. I almost forgot about this. Let me show you a quick, uh, quick gauge for let's say the CPU clock. We'll go with something large. Here's a default gauge that comes with the Ida64 software. 
uh, and hit OK. So, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys get the idea. You can pretty much just customize this to any way you want. The process is simple, but it is tedious. Like I mentioned earlier, you guys can get very, um, very detailed and in-depth with these, with this customization. But depending on how much information you want displayed on the sensor panel, is all completely up to you. We just got to make sure the resolution matches the resolution of your monitor. So yeah guys, that's pretty much how you install an extra monitor or a sensor panel inside your PC. I'll drop a link to everything I talked about as well as links to the sensor panels that I showed off in the video down below if you guys want to check it out. If you found this video helpful, maybe let me know by dropping a like and maybe I'll do more types of these videos in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.